Okay guys, so today I'm going to be showing you guys a mocha pot. It's spelled M-O-K-A. And in addition to that, I'm going to be making an iced latte. Now, I was a barista for a while. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that. But I was also, I was a barista at a church and at Starbucks. So I've seen both sides of big corporate and not so big corporate. But I'm going to show you guys how this wonderful piece of equipment here, these three pieces come together to make some of the best coffee I've ever had in my entire life. Um, to start with, you got your base here. So this is nothing, cr oh, sorry, it's still got water in it. Um, it's nothing crazy, but it's got this little gasket here on the side that doesn't allow pressure to escape. As you'll notice, it's bigger on this end. It'll intake, and then on the inside, it's a lot smaller. It's like pin-sized. Pin so the pressure can't escape. It's actually similar to a ground coffee bag. There's little filter locks that allow the coffee, uh, the coffee, the air to escape, but it doesn't allow it to come back in. This builds up pressure within this, which is how espresso is made. It's actually normal coffee. It's ground finer. The only difference between normal drip coffee and espresso is that espresso is brewed through a process of high intense pressure. That's why you'll see an espresso machine, like I used to work with, the La Marzocos. Um, they use about two atmospheric pressures is something like that um, two atmospheres that's what it is it's two atmospheres and the, I don't know how much pressure this uses but I do know that this uses pressure by intaking air here and not allowing it to come back out building pressure which leads us to our next thing the basket so the baskets where your coffee goes if you ever used a espresso machine this is your group head this is where will go inside this basket here. Um, this funnel is actually it'll connect in here like this. This funnel is where the water is going to after it gets boiled and pressurized it'll come up through here and that pressure comes through this filter and drags the coffee. So once it drags the coffee through that filter there it'll drag it up through the second filter in the top of the pot. Now the second filter will catch most of the grounds. This is a cheap one, so I know it doesn't catch all the grounds. A nice one probably will, though. And then once it comes up through this filter, there's a little stem here that it'll come up. And you can kind of see, if I angle it that way, that there's a hole there. And it'll brew out of either side. We'll see that later on in the video. But this is a cheap one I got from a store around me called Tuesday Morning. Um, it was $5. It wasn't anything crazy. And this literally makes some of the best coffee. So this uh, idea of this mocha pot, which normally when they're screwed on, by the way, they look like this. I'm sure you've seen something like this before. They're commonly used in like Latin America and stuff like that. So this thing here was, the idea for it was invented by an Italian man named Alfonso Bia Bialetti, I believe, in 1933. Um, it's really interesting because it was espresso at the time, but instead of having this big, fancy, expensive machine, you had something you just put straight on your stove top and it made really good coffee. Now, I do want to state this doesn't make a lot of coffee. It makes probably about, for this size pot, which is not very big, it's about the size of my hand. I do fairly big hand. I do have fairly big hands, except play guitar and do magic, but... It makes about two shots. So, without further ado, let's get started on the process. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take your base here and you want to fill it with warm water, which I've already done, to just below the circle here on the inside. That little pinhole thing we talked about, it's going to be just below that. And that's because if the water goes over it, it won't be able to intake air, so it won't be able to build pressure. Now, second thing you're going to do is you're going to take your basket here. Then you're going to take your coffee. I'm using Farmer's Market Collection by Jason Scott Peanut Butter Cup Coffee. This is also from Tuesday morning. It was like $4.99 or something like that. It wasn't anything crazy. So what I do, because I don't know the exact... You, you'd have to dial this in if you were going to ever say, Oh, this is perfect or whatever. But I don't, I don't do that as much. I kind of just eyeball it. Um... I'll use a couple of spoonfuls until it's not so packed full that, like, it's insane, but 
enough that it's at the top, and when I bang it down, it's still got some room. Now, when it does, when I do it that way, it prevents all the grounds from getting up in the coffee, and it really uh, makes the coffee taste a lot better when it's not full of coffee grounds. So, after you get that, you bang it down. Um, that's the equivalent, if you had an espresso machine, of taking your tamp and tamping it. It's just getting it kind of down, leveled, and wipe the sides off, up top on the rim, so you don't, again, you don't want those grounds in there. So then you're going to take the top part here, you're going to screw it on. And after that's screwed on, you want to go ahead and take it over to the stove. Okay, so I'm using a gas stove. You can also use an electric stove for this, it does not matter, but you want to, I have it over here. So you want to get the burner somewhere between low and medium. If you're using an electric stove, you want to put it in the middle because it's not going to heat up as fast. These gas stoves, you're going to want to put it over to the side. So I have it, as you can see, not centered, but over to the side. You also want to make sure you keep this open. Um, this is the top, and you're going to be able to see when the coffee's brewing. You want to take it off of there. As soon as the coffee starts coming out, you really want to turn your heat completely off down here because it will burn the coffee. That's why you should also start with warm water in here because it prevents it from taking too long to boil and burning the coffee. So we'll check back on this when it is done brewing. Next step in this process is to go ahead and get your cup. And then if you're going to put syrup in there, which I am, I'm going to use Hershey's chocolate syrup to make a mocha. Now a mocha is chocolate. So I'm only going to use about a tablespoon. That's about one pump. It actually might be a bit much for that cup. So we'll go ahead and put that back in the fridge. After that's said and done, you're going to wait for the rest of the stuff. You don't want to put any ice or milk in here yet because it'll make it hard to stir the thicker syrup in the bottom. And you don't want that. That's why you want the espresso first because it'll heat it up and allow it to mix easier. As you can see here, it's starting to brew now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off, but it will slowly come out of there and kind of just fill up. It's like shots pouring out of a, sh a machine. Sometimes if it doesn't want to come out all the way, you can turn the heat back on. It seems to be what happened here. But notice when you turn the heat back on, it starts to boil back up. So you gotta got to be careful with that. The higher the heat, the faster it's going to come out. Like I said, it doesn't make much, only about two shots, but you'll see it's coming out. You'll know when it's done because it'll turn rather light colored and start to fizz. Like right about there. So that's when you can 100% turn the heat off if it didn't work already. And then we go ahead and pour it into our cup. Okay, now that everything's done, you can go ahead and take this and pour it right in here. Once that's poured in there, we have our espresso. Now you want to be careful about setting that down on any counters because it's extremely hot. The pot, not the cup. So once your cup has the espresso in it and the flavoring syrup, if you so choose, you would stir it around. And then if you're making an iced latte like I am, you would add some ice. I have a separate cup because it's it will splash everywhere if you try and get out of an ice machine with liquid in it. I've learned that after multiple incorrect attempts and you pour some milk in there. I'm just using fat-free skim milk. The best milk to use is whole milk. Um, it steams the best as well. Then you give it a stir and there you have your mocha latte. Now you can see I didn't stir it all the way and there's still some on the bottom. So if you really were picky about it you could probably just uh, you know really get down under there continue stirring. That wouldn't have stirred at all in cold liquid, so you got to be careful about that. Um, but there we go. There you can see what it tastes like. It's definitely really good. The peanut butter and the chocolate mix well together. It almost tastes like a Reese's cup. Well guys, that's how a mocha pot works, and that's how you make an espresso at home. You could just drink those shots by themselves. 
You gotta be careful if you do that. Um, espresso shots will go bad after about 60 seconds. They'll go from that nice golden brown color they are, like a toasted marshmallow, and they will turn black, and they'll go bitter. That's why when you get milk, and you put it in there, fat saves it. That's why I said it's best to use whole milk, because fat-free skim milk doesn't have the fat. In this case, I had the mocha syrup, so you could do that. Uh, normal lattes, obviously it's just milk and whatever. You could also use a milk frother if you did a hot latte. It's not my favorite because there's too much foam when you use a milk frother, but yeah, it's uh, it was fun. So thank you guys for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this content. Remember to hit that like button. And without further ado, I'm going to sign off. Stay passionate.